How are you guys doing? Part 2 of the week in the Cup Series at Phoenix. This is Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go on like a little plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show of people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and this contest operate. If you have any questions related to NASCAR, it isn't a stupid question. Feel free to shoot them away at Twitter at Brandon Cruz DFS. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best judgment to make the entries initially. If you have a gambling addiction, it's just not my problem. Check your sense of feelings at the door. Yet again, like I said, we're talking about the Cup Series at Phoenix. So let's go ahead and dive into what I think is going to happen this week here. Don't have a whole lot written on the side. We're just going to be mainly talking about the drivers and plays and that nature. If you look above, you see Brandon Cruz DFS on Patreon. That's where you can go to support me, this channel, everything I do. You can find my projections, heat map, everything like that on there. I please ask you to go check that out if you want to do that. And let's break down the drivers and, oh, excuse me, uh, things looking into this race here. Now, I want to start off by talking about line of construction and how I'm really approaching the Cup Series specifically this year. So, look, we need to be honest with each other. Everybody needs to be honest. Content creators, talents, people that play NASCAR, DFS, whatever the case may be, we're all guessing, okay? We're all guesstimating on ownership, on people who are going to lead laps, on plays, everything like that we're guessing. And on top of that, you need luck to go your way to win GPPs and get really high scoring lineups. That's what it is. Be honest with each other. Be honest with yourself. That's what's going on. So when I'm making lineups this year, I'm not paying a premium for place differential. We're seeing that a lot. I, I mean, last week at Las Vegas is an indicator of how I imagine a lot of people are going to make lineups for at least the next month and a half, at least the next two months, maybe even this whole year. The people are going to be looking at track history. People are going to be looking at place differential and safe plays. Okay? That's how it's going to be. This year is not going to be one person running away with races. Whether it's short tracks, whether it's mile and a half, mile and a half, you can throw in more of the underfunded teams or more of the lower teams at the short tracks. I think it's just going to be the powerhouse teams. But I think guys are going to be switching laps a lot. I don't think it's going to be as black and white as it was last year. I don't think it's going to be, you know, two or three guys dominating these races. I think we're going to see four or five lap leaders. And you, at the prices these guys are at and at the people that I'm projecting lead laps, I think you can get them all in there, just like last week. You needed Kyle Larson, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, or Kislowski, one of those guys. And if you built around those guys and threw in different people, that was the way to go. You didn't want to just... I'll put it all on Harvick starting first. You didn't want to put it all on Blaney. You didn't want to put it all on Logano. Even though the track history was there, track history showed that it was going there. And it's the same thing here at Phoenix. So let's like let's look at some of the salaries. So you have Harvick at 11.9. I think that's too expensive. I don't project them to lead a whole lot of laps. How many laps do I have them projected to lead this week? Let's go ahead and take a gander at them. What do I have? Zero. I, I don't see Harvick leading laps. Maybe he'll get a few fast laps. Maybe he'll go through the field. Maybe he'll get some he'll be a good place differential play, but I don't see him leading laps. And at his price, sure he can pay it off for place differential. But that is not what you want from the most expensive guy on on DraftKings. You want a dude who's gonna lead a good portion of the race. Okay? So let's go through the other guys. Chase Elliott. Yeah he's good to go. Joey Logano I personally do not think Logano is going to lead a lot of laps. What do I have Logano projected lead right now? Let's break it down. What do I have him projected lead? 35 laps. Okay? So I have him projected lead some, but I don't see him passing a lot of people. Let's look at the data from last year, and it shows Logano's a great play. If you look at the package at the short track, or at the um, yeah at the short tracks things of that nature the high horsepower low downforce package from last year Logano ran the most amount of laps inside the top five okay that's just how it is top five percentage is all there first Phoenix race which you can find all this stuff at racetheprize.com if you want to look through the lap by lap data as well instead of just hearing me talk about it but if you look at first Phoenix race. Over half of his ra- over half the race ran inside the top five. Bristol, half the race ran inside the top five. Martinsville, 99%. <laughs> you know, New Hampshire, over half. Um, Richmond, over 90%. Uh, Martinsville, too, 66%. Phoenix, too, 95% in the top five. But if you if you look at the like him running that well should mean that they are just leading laps like crazy. Like he should be 
by far and large knocking down the house if this many people think they're going to let me get there hold on if they think he's going to just dominate so let's look at logano's domination his his hog points his fast laps and laps led so i just told you how how what the percentage of him ran in the top five is now let's look at the amount of dominator points that he's got in those races so phoenix number one he ran 58 percent of the laps inside the top five how many dominator points did he get he got 28 bristol i understand this is bristol i'm just using this as an example first bristol race he ran 54 percent of the laps inside the top five how many dominator points did he get he got 10 martinsville 99 percent of the race inside the top five how many dominator points did he get 89 and you get the points so we're going to go through the next races new hampshire he got eight points dover one he had one i'm not going to count the Dover races actually uh richmond 25 martinsville 16 and then phoenix 55 so yeah we've seen him lead a lot looking at rich looking at martinsville more specifically uh the first martinsville race he scored the most dominator points as possible but even at phoenix last year phoenix number two that people are going to look at he only had 55. Chase Elliott scored 65. So he was still outscored by people. If you look at his history in terms of Phoenix itself, which this is why I think Logano is priced so high. He's at 11,100. That's DraftKings. That's their algorithm taken in track history and DraftKings history. Because I don't think a lot of people think about that as well. But his price reflects where he's finished in DraftKings points and DFS points. So the two, these are his last four races in terms of dk points second second third and 13 that justifies the price okay but i don't think logano is going to dominate this race i don't think he leads a good portion of the race i've already told him when he laps i think he's going to lead i don't think logano is a good play it's almost the same situation as vegas i know there are two different racetracks but where everybody's like oh logano should win he should lead a lot of laps i don't think he can do that Keslowski, Larson, Hamlin, Truex, Elliott, Bowman. You know, just those guys alone are guys who I think are going to lead laps. And so you're telling me, and I got to convince myself that Logano, that I'm going to pay 11 1 for Logano, and Logano's going to beat all those guys in terms of laps led. I just, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it this week. So I'm probably going to be under the field on Logano. Um, and I can go through the rest of the pricing, but that really puts my point. You know, people are looking at track history, position history, laps led, um, in terms of how many laps does the pole sitter get? How many laps does second place typically get? You have to really throw that just out. Like, it, it, it's weird for me to say that, but I'm kind of just throwing all that data, all the track history data, all the stuff from pre-COVID, and I'm just throwing that in the trash can, okay? I'm just looking at lap data from last year and how I think they're going to run this year, okay? I think people staring at track history is, sure, they're safe. That's a data you can go off of, but that's that's not showing, you know, the, the plays that I think you should be looking at. And I think that's the direction where a lot of people are going to go. So if you want to know what's chalky, look at track history. Look at the guys who project out to do all right or safe. Harvick, Logano, uh, Blaney, you know, guys like this. I think they're going to be popular. Um, now let's actually break down the people that I like. So I like Keselowski to lead laps. I like Larson to lead laps. Um, can you play them together? It gets harder this week because last week um, you could have played the guys starting up front just because their pricing kind of worked. I think you could still do it here. You just kind of have to finagle with with lineups but i like them to lead laps hamlin um i expect him to lead laps at some point in this race run fast laps as well christopher bell's interesting i think he's a bit expensive but he might work depending on how this race goes i don't see a whole lot of people really getting passed through this race i think a lot of people are going to really hold their positions so that kind of you know makes lineups being built with guys just starting inside the top 20 excuse me viable um Truex jr let me sort this again sorry Truex jr at 10-1 i just i like i like cheaper guys man i like i like cheaper guys like i'd much rather have hamlin over Truex. that's just how it is i'd much rather pay 300 more for kislowski over Truex. you know so i don't think i'm gonna get a whole lot of Truex. i love elliot 
I mean, last year at the Phoenix race, had an illegal car. Man, there's no way that car was legal. So don't put all the eggs there. If you look at the lap data, Kozlowski was losing positions to Elliott on pit road. Every single time Kozlowski went to pit road in the championship race, he kept losing positions. But he was right on par with Chase Elliott. Like, Chase Elliott, yeah, sure. He, he ran away from the field. He won the championship. But he's not God here, okay? So I think he's going to lead laps as well. But I think if people are just looking at, well, you know, Chase won the championship here. Let's look at his how he's ran here. He won the last race here. He ran decent in spring. He probably had the best car uh, in the second to last race, you know, two years ago. Then he blew a tire into thir- turn one and wrecked and finished 39th. But I think Kozlowski might, might, might outdo Chase Elliott here. But I like Elliott. Uh, I don't mind his price at all. If I'm paying up for a guy, it's going to be Chase Elliott. If I think there's going to be a lot of field on Chase Elliott, I might decide to get off of him. Um, yet again, we're guessing. We don't necessarily know who's going to be good and who's not. If that's the case, and if I can leverage ownership like we did last week to where a lot of people went on guys who they thought were going to do well and their ownership was astronomical, Joey Logano, if I can get off of that and go other places, I'm going to do that in such an even playing field of where we don't know where, who's going to perform and who's not going to perform. Kyle Busch, too expensive. I don't think he's going to lead laps. I think he'll finish well, um, but I don't see him leading laps. Ryan Blaney has ran well at these races. He's always had a fast car. Got wrecked in the spring race last time here, but he's been fast. If you look at the lap data, like he's he's there. And his price at 9300 yet again, if you're not paying up, if you're kind of building balanced types of lineups, uh, you can easily get to Blaney. And I guess I didn't even write that down. Um that's what I was going to do with the with the salary. Sorry, I'm going off on the walls this week. Um, personally, how I'm attacking things is I'm not playing anybody really in the 5K range. I'm trying not to do that this year, and I'm trying to be hesitant on playing guys in the 10K range because I think, yet again, you're paying for track position in history. So if you're building lineups, very balanced lineups, the 9, 8, 7K ranges, you can throw in a lot of guys who can lead this race. Hamlin at 9-9, Larson at 9-6, Ryan Blaney at 9-3, Alex Bowman at 8-7, William Byron at 8-3, uh, Chris Bell at 8-1, Kurt Busch at 7-7, Austin Dillon 7-4. So you can build lineups that have dominators. If you project guys in those ranges to lead laps, you can have a stacked field of, or you can have a stacked lineup with guys just in the 8 and 9K ranges. So, you know, um, Ryan Blaney at 9,300, he, he's very appealing this week. Last week when he was expensive, he wasn't appealing. I didn't think he'd do well. But at a racetrack where I think he actually has a higher chance to lead here than he did last week at 9,300, I don't mind going to Ryan Blaney. I don't know if people are going to be pissed at him because a lot of the Blaney family last week was like, oh, if he doesn't win because they project him to win and lead laps. And they were like, oh, if they didn't win, I might have to get rid of my Ryan Blaney shirt. I might have to get rid of the Ryan Blaney club Fan club membership, whatever the case may be, I don't know what his ownership is right now. I haven't listened to anything. Uh, Joey Logano, as I said, I d- I don't think he leads laps, man. I don't think he leads laps. I think Logano runs anywhere from seventh to sixth most of the race. Probably finishes fourth. I don't see him leading a whole lot of laps, and so I'm not paying eleven thousand one hundred for Joey Logano. That's just me. If you want to take that road, if you want to go that way, by all means. Um, but if everybody's going to go Logano, I guess I need to make him chalk. What am I even doing here? Because everything is pointing. I can't even spell chalk. Everything is pointing towards Logano. And if that's the case, I'm going to be under the field. I'm going to go elsewhere and just hope it works out. That's what I'm looking at. William Byron, I love to play far too cheap. Starting 10th, love it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., uh, looking at lineups. Oh, I don't have the ownership. The ownership hasn't updated yet. So I talked about this in the in the Dirty Air podcast when we got to this range on DraftKings, the range of the high 5K. So you have Suarez, you have LaJoy at 6K, Suarez at 5.9, Anthony Alfredo at 5.8, Priest at 5.6, Stenhouse at 5.5. Five. Last week is an example. Like we had Priest run very well. Um, he ran well. Like there's there's nothing else to say. He wasn't really bailed out. Eric Jones was was really bailed out by stuff. Um, but I think this is the range where lineups are going to be won in GPPs here. So if I'm making an argument for LaJoy, Suarez, Alfredo, Priest, Stenhouse, who do I think is going to do better between these guys? 
probably be Priest. Probably be Suarez next. Maybe Stenhouse third. If Stenhouse can hold on to this area, uh, which I think he might struggle. I, make, I think he probably finishes outside the top 15. But if he can get 11th, 10th, 9th at this price, he's going to be optimal. Who, whatever value in the 5K does best and outscores, they're going to be optimal. It's straight up that way. So if you're making a whole lot of lineups, um, not going to play LaJoy. I like Suarez. Not going to play Anthony Alfredo. I'm going to have some Priest. I'm going to have some Stenhouse Jr. Going to have McDowell. Going to have Busher. Going to have Newman if you go in a bit higher up in the 6K ranges. But that's how it is. My rankings here, I guess I haven't really showed them. I mean, this is basically the pool I'm working with, okay? Um, so I'm not... I'm not Throwing out Stenhouse, he'll probably be low owned. We'll just have to see what he can do. Um, but I mean, he, he's a perfect GPP play. Kurt Busch too expensive. I don't want to. I'm wasting too much time talking about these guys. Uh, Austin Dillon, I like Eric Jones. Probably going to be a lot of ownership on Eric Jones. I don't like it. Um, Priest, you know, can work. Michael McDowell can work. It. I'm going to be building a lot of lineups with, like I just said. Um, Priest, Stenhouse, Suarez, McDowell, Busher. Those are going to be the guys in that price range that I use. It just depends on how I, how they end up in lineups. So don't count them out. Don't just count them out starting 16th, 17th, because these are plays that I don't mind, especially when I see them possibly getting 12th, possibly getting the top 15. I don't mind that at all. Kevin Harvick, too, too chalky. This, Kevin Harvick is not the same here at Phoenix, man. Um, yet again, I talked about it in the, in the Dirty Air podcast. Phoenix is a track that has changed so much in the last decade. You know, 2011, they repaved it. And then after when they came back, Harvick was dominant on the track, but it was new asphalt. It was one groove. The races were boring because I was there. I've been there almost every year. Last year was the first year I didn't go to a race there. Okay, so I know how boring this race is. I know why Harvick was so good because it was a one lane. He could run the bottom in turns one and two or three and four, whenever it was that. Um, that's why he was so dominant there. But if you look at his recent races here, he's not just leading, you know, a massive amount of laps anymore. Yeah, sure. He had a good amount of DK points back in, just lost him again, back in the spring here when he finished second. But 11-9 for Harvick starting 18th. Sure, he gives place differential, but... Look at the guys. Like I just said, who who does he have to pass? He, ha he has to pass these. He has to fight all these guys in the top ten, who should lead laps before Harvick can get there. If they're leading laps, that's going to leave Harvick out. I don't think he's going to get fast laps because he'll be racing these guys. He'll be in traffic. I don't see Harvick working at his price. I just don't. Eleven nine for that. That's. I don't think that's going to work. Newman can't can't get rid of him. I think he's he's bad in the price. I don't like him, but I can't exclude him. Uh, at sixty six hundred. If he's the lowest you're going, I don't mind at all. Matt DiBenedetto might carry some ownership. Might not. I can't tell, man. I can't tell. people. I, I think people are going to go to him for a safe play, maybe if you're in cash or something like that, because you look at his track history, 8th, 13th, 13th. Wow, man, he's great. But, you know, I don't want to pay 8500 for him when I can move up and get, you know, William Byron for 8300 who I think can lead laps, 77 for Kurt Busch, who I think could lead laps. You know, Austin Dillon, 7,400. You know, these guys are cheaper. They're graying out very similar in terms of projected points. I don't think I get to Matt DiBenedetto either. Uh, Alex Bowman, I love. Can't say anything else about that. Ross Chastain, not going to do it. Tyler Reddick, I think he'll be chalky because everybody thinks that, you know, this is the Reddick track, Homestead and Phoenix. He ran some fast laps here, but he also got in the ball. I just, I don't want to deal with the Reddick play at all i think he might actually be chalkier than we think he's going to end up being just because of his price uh at 7900 dollars. i just i just don't want to be there i'd rather go to cole custer bubba wallace isn't horrible don't look at the track data you got to find other reasons that 15th 19th not even gonna look at that okay what do i think this car can do it's the fifth jgr car they've had some bad breaks um and it is the fifth like Th that that's not Bubba. That's not the team. They just had an oil leak. He had an oil leak, and then he lost power steering, and they still got that fixed, and he still finished, you know, 28th, whatever he finished last week. Yeah, finished 20. He, he finished 28th after going like four or five laps down. Sure, he was passing lap down cars, but he wasn't just getting passed by a leader. He had good speed. So, you know, 
don't lower your expectations. He's not getting fired. He'll get fired out of you know stuff that's his fault. But last week was not his fault. Seventy two hundred. I don't mind going there for Bubba Chase Briscoe. I'm not going to pay that. I'd much rather play Bubba over Chase Briscoe. Daniel Suarez starting twenty seventh. Excuse me. In that five k range, I'm probably going to use a lot of Stenhouse or a lot of uh, Suarez. Don't like Anthony Alfredo as a play. Don't like JG Ailey. Don't like BJ McLeod. Let's talk about BJ McLeod because. I'm telling you, I was right. B.J. McLeod's the best of the underfunded team. Best of the underfunded guys. But he's starting 30th at $4,500. I said if he was ever $4,500, I'm going to play him. Sadly, he's starting 30th. I'm not even going to bother with him, okay? These punt plays that Optimizer are throwing in or that like you're having to go down here just aren't working. you got to remember that DraftKings changed the point system for the guys down here. So it's not only, you know... You got to get a punt that can finish, you know, well. It's almost the punt needs to finish, you know, 28, 27, 26. And so you need a punt to basically start last, be at a price that fits into the lineups and finish 28, 27. So I don't see it, man. I don't see, I, I don't want to bother playing any of these guys. And then Eric Amarola, I mean, he should be the lock of the season. If you're playing cash, I imagine we're going to see a lot of people pay up for Eric Amarola. At $9,000, you know, they see his track history, 13th, 8th, 22nd, 4th, 4th, and 7th. And then they're going to see, okay, well, you know, he's not that bad if you look at his DK points, 14th, 13th, 32nd, and 5th in the last four. But yet again, the situation where you're paying a premium for place differential. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'll let everybody else go there. I'm not going to play Eric Amarola. That's just how it is. So... Let's let's recap. How am I? What am I building lineups? How am I selecting dominators? It's not based on their salary. I'm not looking at tiers. Of this is the 10k tier. Who do you like from this? This is the 9k tier. Who do you like from this? I'm not doing that. I'm looking at who I project to lead line. Who I who do I project to lead laps? I don't care if they're 8k, 9k, 10k, whatever the case may be. Whoever I project to lead the most amount of laps, whoever I project to do the best here, which I just talked about, that's who I'm going to be playing. You know, don't. I think last week showed that a lot of people are caught up in the term dominator in a sense of they think dominator, they think 10K, you got to pay up for the 10K guys. And with no practice, we have no idea what these teams are bringing to the track. I'm, I'm not paying that much for that type of stuff. I'm, I'm just not. I'm looking at people who have, I'm looking at lap data. I'm looking at guys who did well at the road course. I'm looking at how they're performing this year. I like Hendrick a lot. I like Pinsky a lot. I'm going to be building around those guys again. I like Joe Gibbs Racing. So if I can build around those guys, I'm going to be just happy. I like Austin Dillon again. So I'm going to be throwing him into lineups as well. So it just depends on that. Where do I see lineups going? And yet again, the optimizer is just not one to work with me. But who's popping off right now? The exact same guys that I just told you. We got a lot of Hendrick drivers. A lot of Pinsky guys. Kurt Busch is popping off a lot, um, which is what I expected. So, I mean, it, just the just same guys I was talking about, man. Um, just going to be mixing and matching those guys and then mixing and matching the 5K drivers that are actually useful. So hopefully this, guy, hopefully this helps you out, guys. Thank you for listening live show yet again Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. You can hear me and Race for the Prize, Pierce. Um, talk about the cup series and everything there come ask questions we're doing another live show for the xfinity series saturday 12 30 eastern so come on in check in talk with us ask us questions and um yeah just this is a different animal nascar dfs is a different animal than it was in the last few years you got to get that through your head and you got to realize that we're making lineups we're building lineups far differently than we ever have before embrace that don't be afraid of it just embrace it Thank you guys for listening. I'll catch you in live shows later this week. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.